God, I mean, most entrepreneurship in the world is what's called necessity entrepreneurship. It's not mission-driven entrepreneurship. These are people who are entrepreneurs not because they have a big idea or because they're passionate about what they're doing. They're trying to survive, and they don't, there's no institutional way for them to do that. The, the notion of mission-driven entrepreneurship, I think, is something that is, is um, a force that is taking form uh, in, the emer in the developing world and in the emerging economies that is, ha has, a, has a couple of different facets to it. One is, and, 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 and I've had this discussion with Carlos before, uh, around the notion of entrepreneurship being really a surrogate in many of these economies for a notion of empowerment and democracy. The idea that the political institutions are not democratic, but the commercial institutions might be, and that individuals might get uh, see a chance of being empowered through entrepreneurship um, in a way that they can't be empowered by other institutions. <coughs> that's really, that's a very important aspect of global entrepreneurship that needs to be considered when we think about how it gets translated out of a place like Silicon Valley, where it's about inventing to a place like Chile where it may be about how you create social change using commerce as your tools. Um, that's one side of it. But the, directly to Richard's question, which is how do you get your experience in environments where there is not a history of entrepreneurship? This is very difficult. Um, a lot of times when I'm traveling around and asked to speak about entrepreneurship, I'm asked to speak in the Silicon Valley of Taiwan, the Silicon Valley of India, the Silicon Valley. So everybody has a Silicon Valley, and you walk into these places, and sure enough, it looks just like Silicon Valley. It has you know, modern buildings, and it has uh, lots and lots of bandwidth, and it has all these little pop-up cubes and PCs on everybody's desk, but something critical is missing. And that is a culture of entrepreneurship that Silicon Valley has spent 80 years creating, a culture of entrepreneurship. And that culture is what is most valuable, not any of that infrastructure. The infrastructure is wonderful, and a lot of it is necessary, but not sufficient. Um, a culture of entrepreneurship requires generations of entrepreneurs to continually reinvest themselves in the next generation of entrepreneurship. Something in Silicon Valley we see all the time. When I talk to my, my peers in Europe, for instance, um, also a vibrant uh, venture capital uh, uh, area, what they tell me is the problem in a place like Europe is you invest in a successful entrepreneur and the next thing you know, they've moved to the south of France. In Silicon Valley, people get confused all the time because they see billionaires going back to work every day. And what you realize is why they're going back to work. They're going back to work because they want to be part of the next thing. Whatever that is, they are going out and finding young, talented people and investing themselves in growing and developing that talent. They're finding interesting new ideas and they're investing themselves in those ideas, both personally and financially. And they become part of this ecosystem that constantly generates new successes and more entrepreneurs that go in and feed the system. So Silicon Valley, one of the cultural attributes that I think is, is very distinguished from the Silicon Valleys I see every place else on the planet, including in places, other places in the United States, is the notion of how we deal with failure. Everybody thinks, well, this is just an amazing culture because of all the successes. The reason we have the successes is because of the way our culture deals with failure. Failure in Silicon Valley is usually seen as positive experience unless it happened because you were dumb, you were corrupt, or you were lazy. If you're, one of those things caused you to fail, you're out. If you failed because the market changed, because you were wrong about your science, because competitors beat you to the market, you've just earned a badge to go try it again. And being able to reinvest in people who have taken a chance and allow them to eventually perfect their art and find the right innovation and the right time in the right market, that is what makes Silicon Valley so powerful.